Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Julie Keckstein. I'm on the CMC board, and I spend my days serving clients at PNC Wealth Management across the street. We are so happy to be here. Today's forum is brought to us by Burgess and Nipple and the Green Funds of the Columbus Foundation. Won't you please help me thank them, their associates are here today, and welcome Ellen Tripp, a founding member of the Green Funds of the Columbus Foundation, to introduce our program. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. The Green Funds of the Columbus Foundation is pleased to support the mission of the Columbus Metropolitan Club in, meaning, in supporting meaningful conversations that contribute to the health and vitality of our region. We're also pleased to support the goals of both of our wonderful park systems that bring people together with the natural environment and also help to maintain the healthy and sustainable quality of life for our area. As a former commissioner for both Columbus Recreation and Parks and Metro Parks, it is my pleasure to introduce the new leaders of our Central Ohio Park System. Neither one of these people is new to parks. Tim served as director of Parks and Recreation for the city of Upper Arlington, while Tony was director of Parks and Recreation for the city of Gahanna. Together, these two homegrown products are now serving the wider community and working together to share their passion for people and kids and public spaces. So please join me today in welcoming uh, the new member, the, uh, excuse me, the new director of Columbus and Franklin County Metro Parks, Tim Maloney, and the new director of Columbus and Recreation and Parks, Tony Collins. And hosting our forum today, a sports and fitness fan himself, the spokesman for Commit to be Fit and anchor of Channel 10 TV, please welcome Jeff Hogan. Thank you very much, Ellen. Thank you so much, Ellen, I appreciate that. This should be the easiest gig of the month for me with these guys and this topic and what I am passionate about. Uh, I'm certainly delighted to be here representing WBNS 10 TV and the Dispatch Broadcast Group. Uh, great group of my colleagues right in the center table there. Uh, so thank you all for coming out there, including my wife here uh, today. So we're looking forward to a great conversation with these guys. Uh, and it is certainly something that I am passionate about, uh, getting out and getting fit and getting healthy and, and motivating others to do the same uh, with our Commit to Be Fit program. And uh, enjoying nature is one of the most important parts of that and something that uh, is scientifically proven that does a body good mentally and uh, physically. So these guys uh, know far more than I do about uh, what we're going to get into today. And uh, to pick their brain uh, for an afternoon is just such an interesting task for me. Uh, in fact, Tim, the former director okay, of uh, our Metro Parks here um, tried to kill me. Uh, he, try he tried to get me uh, to climb every peak, the highest peak in every state in this country and other ones outside this country. And I think you might have taken a tip from him because so far you and I have, we've ridden mountain bikes in the snow, okay, up and down trails and hills and whatnot. Yesterday he tried to drown me in mud uh, <laughs> as we get ready for our mud and madness uh, activity. That, that's coming up September 12th is the first one uh, in our Metro Parks. But Tim, uh, it's been great getting to know you and, and great uh, getting a relationship together um, for all that we do here. And uh, Tony, I'm looking forward to great things in the near future as well as, as both of you are new to these positions. So please tell me, both of you, how, take us back, I mean, you can, in 30 seconds, go back to college and take us from there. How do you get in the position you are in today, coming out of OU and OSU, respectively? I can make it real simple. Go to school to study finance, realize you don't want to wear a suit and tie to work. <laughs> Talk to your academic advisor as you're graduating, saying you don't want to wear a suit and tie to work. She then laughs at you and says, you chose the wrong major. <laughs> Spend a summer working on a playground, uh, working with kids, and then realizing your whole life has just changed. But that's 30 seconds of where I am. 
Yeah, getting us to answer any question in 30 seconds is not going to happen. First off, let's let's be clear about that. Try right Anybody in this seat. room that knows me knows that's not a possibility. Um, but a similar story went went uh, to my mother's uh, joy. Uh, changed from pre-law in college at Ohio University to after a summer of summer camp, uh, working at a resident summer camp for the YMCA. Knew that this is this was my calling and this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to change people's lives, work with kids, and. Uh, it was an easy switch, easy switch. And I graduated from OU with a recreation management degree, started my career with the Y, and now here I am today. Well, congratulations to both of you for proving guidance counselors somewhere <laughs> along your way wrong uh, and, and making it to the positions that you've done today. And I mean that with all due respect, of course. Uh, you guys have, are fresh off an interview process. So what did you do to get hired? How, Tony, how did you? I'm curious. I'm curious. And I'm not saying it like, how did you get this job? I'm saying, I'm saying, you know, what we asked the same question out? about each other. How, you know, to me, it's about, it, I think the thing that the commission saw in both of us, whether it was the, the, the Metro Parks Board or the, the City of Columbus Recreation and Parks Commission, it, you said it earlier, is our passion. Uh, you know, we're in this to change people's lives. We know, we know the impacts of what we do from the economic impact the health, the quality of life, we can tell those stories all day long. But both of us are here today because we're, we want to change people's lives. We want to provide those opportunities for them to be outside with their families, to grow, to become stronger, to become healthier. And I think that when you express that with, and, and tell about who you are and, and the fact that you want to share that story and get everybody in the room involved with that, that passion comes out and people want to be a part of it. I couldn't agree with Tony more. Now, I have to be very cautious. Just two or three of our board members are in the audience today, which means that's a majority. They can ask me to leave after this answer, <laughs> so i got to be very cautious. Uh, but I, passion is a word that I think is undersold uh, about Tony and I, but I, I don't know. Once I was in this, I, I knew that I wanted to be with Metro Parks since I really was probably in the third grade and I, whatever happened happened and I ended up here and I, I still pinch myself on the way to work every morning. Well, Tony, I understand, um, beat out uh, somebody in the process uh, who's in the CIA. Now, without, yeah. without killing us, if you tell <laughs> us the answer, how did you top that? <laughs> you know, I, I, it might have been just from our experience. You know, we have a little bit more experience in the parks and recreation field than most people in the CIA. I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe you know, we'll see. Um, and I, I should, you know, say that is, is that uh, coming from the, the different backgrounds that we have, whether it was City of Columbus, the YMCA, the, the, the nonprofit world, uh, even working in the suburban world, the concepts that we've learned over the years, uh, whether it was through OU, Ohio State, or along the lines with all the great professionals that we've had a chance to work alongside, that information was, was relevant. And, and the fact that we're local and we know the region, and we know the neighborhoods, and we know the organizations and the partners, I think was a tremendous help as well. Tim, what about motivating factors and, and maybe some individuals along the way who, who might have guided you and sent you in this path? Okay, well, this is, I'm sorry, but those of you know me, I'm just gonna ramble here for a second or two. This is not the 30 second thing, you can go. Okay, good. Uh, I, I, I said this when I first came aboard with Metro, it, it's a distinct memory. I was in the third grade. I was at Our, Our, Our Lady Peace Elementary School, Clintonville. We went on, I've always played outside. Never, I, don't, I say, sometimes say, you know, my parents didn't like me because they said, get out. We don't want you in the house. And we took a field trip up to Sharon Woods and there was this place and there was, in my mind, no rules because even though there is a fence at Sharon Woods, you can't see it. And we were allowed to run there. We were allowed to run here. We were allowed to do this. And there was Schrock Lake. I'm allowed to fish there all day, so I don't have to play kickball. And, and it became a passion of mine. And I spent that entire summer going up to Schrock Lake to try to catch the biggest fish at the lake. Sidebar story. I was at the Our Lady of Peace Festival over the weekend. Hadn't been there probably since I left Our Lady of Peace. The third grade teacher who took me on that field trip still teaches at Our Lady of Peace Elementary School. <laughs> And I can't believe how much I impacted her life because she now feels like she had something to do with it. So and any Our Lady of Peace people, we're doing an all-school field trip <laughs> to Sharon Woods Metro Park this fall with Our Lady of Peace. 
but there's hundreds. We were talking about this before. There's hundreds of people who've impacted our careers. Some of the people who were our forefathers, and I'm sure Tony wants to talk about them, all the way up to people we work with today. I drove down with Roman right here, and I'm going to pick on you, Roman. Roman's one of our CSIs. He, uh, a CSI program is uh, a high school internship program to introduce Columbus Public Schools to Metro Parks. Roman spends his day emptying trash cans, painting things that need painted, weeding things that we haven't gotten to, learning a little bit about Metro. Roman thinks we're doing stuff for him. That's not the truth. We are actually taken from Roman. And I discovered on the way down here that Roman is fluent in two languages. Well, Roman probably has worked himself into a part-time position with Metro. He hasn't interviewed. He doesn't even know there's a job existing to let us reach out greater in central Ohio. And it's, it's through people like Roman and the rest of the people we impact every day. He didn't even know he got interviewed on the way to lunch. No, I think I scared him Good more Good for than you, anything. Roman. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Influences, Tony. You know, I, I, I completely agree with what Tim's saying. In terms of people, we've been, I've been blessed to have people in my life, you know, whether it starts at home with my mother, who is, you know, driven and passionate about what she did, you know, and, and to the, you know, the same thing. When she wasn't around, I was, I was growing up at a center with, with leaders who took the time to say, hey, why don't you come and help volunteer at the swim lesson? Or, hey, why don't you work as a camp counselor this summer in our, our, counsel, our, our, our camping program? Uh, to, you know, and, and we have those visual moments as you think about your career, you know, all of us have these, these signpost moments. You know, I remember sitting uh, on the bus, on a day camp trip bus, you know, with, uh, I'll, I'll never forget his name, John Petty, nine-year-old boy who looked at me and said one day, you know what, this is the best place I could ever be. I, and I want a job just like yours someday. And that, that was the summer that I went and changed my major from, you know, pre-law to, to, to recreation. Those moments stick with you. And, and, like Tim said, you know, all along the way, whether it was the leader uh, with the YMCA or, or, or when I first entered the profession, I remember we, I'm a member of the Ohio Parks and Recreation Association. We have 1,300 members around the state. And I remember going to conferences and sitting with John Brennan and Don Bell, and some of you guys know those names, you know, and, and, and listening to the stories and, see, and just looking at those guys and hearing how passionate they were about serving. And, and the stories, everything from being on a playground leader all the way up to I'll never forget walking into Mayor Brennan's office in Bexley, and he was revising job descriptions for summer camp leaders. And I was like, wow, okay, I guess that's pretty important to you. You know, still to this day, that was the passion that he had all the way through. So those are the things that, that have stuck with me over the years and that, that model of service that I, I always want to give back to. Glacier Ridge is my home metro park, and uh, I know that all of you have one not far away from you. Uh, I spent time... Uh, with a commit to be fit or a healthy hike going to uh, Three Creeks uh, last year, or at least I thought it was Three Creeks that I was going to. I ended up at Clear Creek <laughs> Metro Park, not even the same county. <laughs> Holy cow. But there's one, there's one near you, and I'm sure that you've been out there on them, uh, and you keep adding to them, Tim, as well. And, Tony, there's 215-plus uh, Columbus uh, recreation and parks. Uh, you're talking about amazing size of what you guys deal with every day, and you're just at the infancy of it. So what are the surprises that you've come across here uh, in the early going of your tenures? You know, I, I'd say two things. Uh, the first has is, is been a pleasant surprise, that no matter what organization you're with, whether you're with a rural parks and recreation agency, a district, uh, a, an urban center, the concepts are the same. People want to be connected via pass. People want trails to be able to get out and, and use for recreation and transportation. People need access to parks. They need to be able to be connected to their neighborhood park. People need recreation opportunities, chances to be physically fit, to, to connect with their families, to be social with the community. And, and everybody wants to steward our environment so it's there for the long term. Those concepts have transferred each step of the way. And, and, and in Columbus, when I walked in, there's an incredible team already there putting those things on the ground. So it's been a pleasant surprise that those concepts transfer on. The, the other piece that I would add, and, and probably this has been, I guess, the biggest surprise to me is, I, you know, in, when I was in Gahanna, I always, I always talked about sharing the story, the impacts of recreation and parks. When you work in a small suburb, it's hard to get the word out about the great things that, that are happening in your, in your community when it comes to trails or parks or recreation amenities. I thought, well, the urban, you know, Columbus and, and Franklin County, they, they have all the money. They can do those things all day long. They do a great job. 
what I found when I came to Columbus is, is that they, they have the same challenge. They're so busy running programs and changing people's lives, they don't get enough time to share the story. And, and that's going to be one of my major priorities while I'm in Columbus is get the word out about all the great things that they're doing. I shared that just a real quick side note. I, I was my third Friday in. I, I'm sorry. I, I told you 30 seconds was not going to happen. But I was I was at a family. You know, some folks, fr friends and family were over to my house a, a couple of weeks back, and and my brother-in-law who asked me, you know, well, what's the difference in your job? And and I said, you know, in Parks and Recreation, we get the chance to change people's lives every day. In in Columbus, it happens probably 10 times a day. I said, there are incredible things happening in Columbus that nobody knows about. And, and, and I, I said, I shared the example, the third Friday I started. At 11 o'clock in the morning, I got to open Maryland Pool, a brand new pool rebuilt. Maryland Pool was our first pool built in 1929. And we rebuilt it this year and, and, and opened it up. And the kids were just having a blast. At 1 o'clock, ESPN was at our aquatic center videotaping a Make-A-Wish event. It's on ESPN right now, if you pull it up, from one of our swimmers who had grown up swimming at a Columbus pool. At 6 o'clock, I got to go, to go to a boxing exposition where we were, we were working with our AFS program, which brings teens in and gives them an opportunity to, to, to learn and, and be around mentors. But it also celebrated our great boxing tradition in Columbus Recreation Parks, where on staff we have Jerry Page and Buster Douglas in the room teaching kids and being role models. And at 7 o'clock, I got to go to the Cultural Arts Center and open one of the most incredible art exhibits that Central Ohio has seen. Did you get to do that, those cool things that day? I mean, come on. And I, didn't, and I didn't have the chance to share the story with anybody. I was texting my staff, give me our Facebook password. I need to sell these stories. It was, uh, it was just an incredible day. So I, I think that's been the most exciting surprise. Surprises for you? Well, uh, one, Tony doesn't get to go first anymore. <laughs> That's not a surprise. Um, now, I, you know, what's strange is when you're applying for a job, when you're vying, when you're competing, you're, you're trying to convince these people that you know everything. And when in reality, you know nothing. And uh, when I joined Metro Parks, and just like Tony, it, the team was just amazing to start with. That's the easy answer to give in a big room like this. It really is. Uh, what's caught me most off guard and it catches me it's to this date is, and I'm going to go on a sidebar here in a second, but how safe that really we've dedicated to our Central Ohio Park systems, how safe they are for our communities. Uh, coming from the municipal side, we relied on the local police department. Metro Parks is so vast. I mean, multiple counties, thousands of acres. We have our own police force. Now, I knew that through the interview process, but I didn't quite understand it. We have 35 law enforcement officers. These are state sworn law enforcement officers. We have an additional 50, give or take, depending on the season, of rangers who are out there uh, making it safer for our customers. Now, this is my sidebar. I'll argue with anybody in this room if they think of a safer place than a park, and I mean a metro park, I mean a Columbus park, any park. They're unbelievably safe when you look at national statistics, but the fact that we've got our rangers out on the greenways, our greenways, that we have them in our parks, moms, dads, grandmas, the general park user feels better when they see that vehicle going down, when they see that ranger walking down the thing. That's what's surprising to me is the people who come up to you and say, Oh, I just love going on the greenways because you've got, you know, the rangers and they come by and, and they tell me stories never about that they've solved some crime or prevented this activity. Oh, no, I had a flat tire. And they carry a kit with them to change a flat tire or they carry a bike pump. And it, it's that customer service that it, it really you come if you grow up in the city you've come to expect. But we've got a lot of people who haven't and it's quite refreshing. When you guys think about the history of your organizations, is it a, is it a daunting thing that you think of? Is it, um, you know, is it a challenge moving forward, what you look forward to? What do you, what do you think of when you think of the history of what's been done at your respective parks? Can oh, I go, no, for, yeah, can go, I go first? first? <laughs> you know, this is a bad question. I get to go first because, well, it's really good because we have a 70th birthday coming up. 70th birthday, that's great. You've been there for all of them? No. Okay. These guys are 100, so he'll probably let the room know that. We're older than that. <sighs> but 
if you look at, you know, study the history of Metro Parks, we started 70 years ago about an idea of creating a space so the people from Columbus and, you know, that the metropolitan area could go out and experience nature. And we created Black Lick. And uh, we've got a couple of newspaper articles in the office that we refer to every now and again. And, and the news wasn't very kind. Why would you build a park so far away from the city that nobody can ever get to it? And then you go through the archives and you see the pictures. And 70 years ago, it took effort to get people out there. But Black Lick Park 70 years ago was a diverse park. Black Lick Park today is a diverse park. Then the articles get really strange when we start to build a Blendon Woods Park or a Sharon Woods Park or a Darby that's, uh, you know, it's in a different world. So the history of our park started really with that conservation movement and it's alive there today. And it, it, I'm very proud that for a short bit of that 70 years, I've had a teeny bit of influence on and I hope I have quite a bit more over time, but it, it's just an amazing place and amazing history. I'm sure conservation is part of it for you, Tony, but, but community would seem to be uh, as big a part. Yeah, I, I mean, to go back to your original question, I, I feel the, the tremendous respect for everything that has been done before I've gotten there and, and a huge, incredible responsibility to make sure that I can take it to the next level, that I can work with our team to, to continue to do the great things. We've been around for 105 years. Uh, just to, to be clear, the <laughs> topper. Uh, but we've got parks that are older than that. You look at Good Ale. You look at uh, 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 see. And I knew I would do this. That's why I, I put little sheets of paper in front of me because I would forget all the names. None but you, in front of me. I know, I know. <laughs> but you look at uh, you know Livingston Park, Good Ale. Uh, the, the, the parks that have been around that, that trace back to the 1800s. I mean, we go back. 1910 is when the Recreation Division was formed, 1929, our, our, our first uh, public pool. You know, one of the coolest things I learned, and, and uh, I had an opportunity to, to meet some of the former CRPD staff a, a few weeks uh, into my job, and you know, I didn't know, and I don't know how many people knew that the zoo was once a part of the Recreation and Parks Department. You know, back in the 70s, when the Recreation Parks and forestry divisions all came together and, and, and managed the zoo, I missed that. I really would, would like to. We had a zoo. I mean, right, right. <laughs> Uh, the zoo started at Franklin Park and, and, and uh, has moved on and, of course, now is separated out. So it's a tremendous history filled with incredible stories, life-changing. I can't go to a, a place. I can't go to a meeting. I can't go to an event, a program, and not talk to somebody who has grown up in one of our centers, who started in one of our playgrounds. Uh, it's just absolutely unbelievable. And I keep going back to this, but you're going to hear it all night or all day, all night, too, is, is the stories. The stories are incredible, and I just want to, I want to get those out there because uh, it's, it's awesome. There has to be a good story about community collaboration uh, when you talk about, and not just your two organizations, but as well working with uh, the other uh, entities around town here. You said you wanted to go first. Okay. <laughs> so, that, that does work out perfect because, uh, and, and Jeff alluded to it a little bit, Metro Parks and Columbus Recreation and Parks have, we could write a book on the partnerships, the collaborations we've done. You know, we've got one of, it was actually rated the number three park in North, in the United States of America, Scioto Audubon Metro Park. Uh, my office used to be on the Whittier Peninsula. The Whittier Peninsula was an interesting place to say the least. <laughs> Uh, and then through that partnership with Metro Parks in Columbus and, and beyond Columbus Recreation Parks, it was the city of Columbus. And then, you know, to integrate the Grange Insurance Audubon Center into that. I mean, that is now a municipal draw that, you know, we really never thought turning a brownfield into something so spectacular as that. And I'm, I'm probably going to keep talking about, uh, the, you know, Rec and Parks and us. We've got... New Albany or uh, Rocky Fork Metro Park open in, in August. That park doesn't happen without the City of Columbus Recreation Parks as well as New Albany, as well as other partners out there. We've got Scioto Grove opening up uh, either late this year or early next year. It's a 660 acre park down in Grove City. Uh, every day, Grove City's coming to the table with more and more opportunities for that. And, there's, and you know, when you start throwing partners in there, there's all types of state funding in there. But our real partnerships come in our volunteer core. Uh, thousands of volunteers. We have such a pent up demand for volunteerism. I tell this story and I used to think it was bad, but now I think it's good. We have Inniswood Metro Gardens. 
there's a waiting list to be a volunteer. And anybody in our field, you hear volunteer, you gravitate towards them. If you go to Inniswood today and knock on the door and say, hi, I would like to be a volunteer, they say, oh, volunteer orientation is this month. Uh, it's that big of a demand. That park does not exist without those volunteers. And, you know, and here I'm looking at Jeff and thinking, we have a media partner in 10TV and with the dispatch group. We don't get the stories out, as Tony was talking about, without that partnership. Uh, Jeff probably won't tell you guys this story, but he was knee deep in mud yesterday, <laughs> head to toe covered in mud. But it wasn't just Jeff. His cameraman, Jeff was dressed for it. Jeff knew he was getting muddy. Jeff knew everything. The cameraman felt the urge, and at one point he laid on his belly in the mud just because it was going to be a better shot to get that story out. And I'm probably missing a thousand and one partners, but I, I will defer to Tony. <laughs> you know, I, I think Tim and I both bring the same approach from a partnership standpoint. Parks and Recreation and government has got to be different going forward if we're going to be sustainable. And those folks who have been around me over, the, you know, whether it was in Gahanna or OPRA or now in Columbus, they hear that word a lot from me. And I, and I know sustainable, we often think of from the environmental standpoint, but I'm thinking about also financial sustainability. And, and we as governments, whether it's the Metro Parks or city government and city recreation and parks, we have to, we have to depend on partners to be able to get done what we want to do uh, and, and to build and grow and to sustain our, our services, especially in Columbus. We've got uh, the list of partners is enormous, and I, and I want to name a couple, but I don't want to leave any out. But, you know, whether it's COSI, uh, the library, uh, the Franklin Park Conservatory, uh, our, the Children's Hunger Alliance, uh, we, we have nonprofit partners that help us spread our ability to do our mission. We have public partners. You know, Tim mentioned the, the partnership between Metro Parks and the City of Columbus. Our trails in Central Ohio region are as strong as they are because City of Columbus and, and Franklin County Metro Parks and all of our suburbs, Gahanna, Westerville, Dublin, all work together to build and develop that trail system through the efforts of Morpsey and, 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 and Morpsey brings us together in, in, in some of those formalized partnerships, but even informal. Uh, uh, we have private partnerships that are growing and strengthening uh, through our, our play program, which brings in private partners to help support uh, and remove barriers for kids to participate in activities, uh, all the way to our corporate partners who help us you know, put fountains and park amenities and playgrounds. You know, there's a great program at your table, the, the Find Me in Your Park, that gets folks out. So all of those things, those programs, those facilities, those services, those life-changing moments don't happen without partners. And, and that's going to be a major focus as well going forward for not just the two of us, but our entire organization. Well, phil philosophically, that tells us where you stand moving forward. And I'm kind of curious uh, what kind of programs uh, we can look forward to uh, to get excited about. We started this whole afternoon talking about health and fitness and things like that, and you just brought it up uh, about folks getting out there and trying to be fit, and it's, uh, whether it's recreation centers and things like that or, or around our parks. Uh, what does the near future hold for events and uh, things that we can be excited about moving forward? The, the, you know what, um, we've got some, we continue to invest to grow what we've been doing uh, and to make it even stronger and better uh, with Columbus. Uh, in terms of physical activity and wellness, it's, it's the gamut. It's, it's creating opportunities outside, so expanding our trail system. Number one most prioritized use is our trails. Folks want to get out, be active. It's, it's the, most, uh, ret the highest return on investment we have. Uh, but we're doing other things to get folks out. We're putting exercise equipment outside of our centers to, to keep them outside but physically active. We're doing things like investing in our infrastructure, uh, using bond funds to, to rebuild and to, to build new uh, facilities that the community counts on. Uh, Maryland Pool, I mentioned, Lincoln Pool opened up this year. Uh, we're doing renovation at Douglas Recreation Center. We're building new center at Glenwood and at Driving Park to get our residents the opportunity to, to be physically active and, and engaged all year round. We've got some incredible partnerships. I, I, I hope everybody, the one story that I think has, has really caught on and I, and, I, and I hear a lot about it coming back to me is our summer food service program. Hopefully you've seen that program. You know, we gave out 650,000 meals last year to kids in need. And that's only 15% of the eligible kids that could, could use those meals. So that's, that's a, it's a year-round activity, but we fo we're focused right now in the summer because we rolled out our food service truck. I hope everybody's seen the strawberry truck out there or seen it on the news. It is an incredible opportunity for us to engage our community. So going to places, we have 250 plus sites that we, we distribute summer food service to. 
this truck will go to those sites that we can't be. You know, uh, centers that, that we can do some outreach. And we've got a recreation leader on who's a uh, retired uh, just legend in our department. So not only is he rolling out there and providing a meal, but he's jumping out with a bag of playground balls and leading a play, playground activity out on, and at the same time. It's that outreach to bring kids in, to show them that there are people out there that care. There are great role models to be involved, and we're here for you. We're here to help lift you up so that you can, you can you know, be well and active. So those are just some of the new things that we have going on. The list is forever long, uh, and I hope to be able to continue to share those. Tim, I'm going to let you answer the same question after I tell folks that we're at the five-minute warning part right here that I need to tell you about. So anything that's churning in your head and you want to come up and ask some questions, that's what we're going to reserve. In about five minutes, we're going to bring you folks up uh, to have a talk at that microphone right there. And it is uh, certainly a, a tradition among this group to take those questions. So uh, we'll ask you to step up to the microphone in just about five minutes. Give your name, uh, who you're affiliated with possibly, and uh, ask your question. And as always, we, uh, we ask you to ask questions and uh, don't make any long editorial comments where we have to cut you off and turn the <laughs> mic off. <laughs> so we appreciate Appreciate that. Um, but Tim, same thing. Moving forward, besides mud and madness, I still have mud in my ear from yesterday, by the way. Uh, and, and, and this is an editorial, but oh, so be it. Uh, I really, really am passionate about getting younger people outdoors. And it, whether it's to Tony's rec centers, whether it's out in front of their house playing kickball, whether it's going to a metro park, whether it's flipping rocks at a creek. And I, it's, I can tell you Metro Park staff knows it, that that is our mission. Jeff just mentioned Mud and Madness. You're going to see an extensive amount of offerings at our parks that's going to bring them in. But there's an end game with that. We don't want to become the be-all programming entity. But my goal is, is that parents start dropping kids off at Metro Parks. And I know that is such a bold statement in a society with crime running rampant everywhere. That's sarcasm if you're not picking up on it. There is no greater place than letting our kids outdoors. Push them out the back door, push them out the front door. If you have to, call me. I'll come pick them up. <laughs> But there is no greater lesson in life than we can give to our children to let them make independent decisions. Let them skin their knee. Let them discover poison ivy. I have taught well over 10,000 kids what poison ivy looks like. Not one of them ever listened to me. <laughs> My two children who now have had poison ivy can identify it from a mile away. The only way to know that a bee sting hurts is get stung by a bee. The only way to know how not to get lost is to get lost. We as parents, and I, I told you I'm editorializing, we're failing because we have to do everything for them and it's a huge mistake. And that is what I'm going to be working on over the next however many years. So, I, I, now, if I was Donald Trump, I'd give his cell phone out to everyone right now. Totally. So you could call him, right? <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, when you talk about the diversity that this city uh, has enjoyed and, and, and embraced over the years, to stay competitive in the region, in the state, in the world, uh, what kind of best practices do you take from, from other parts of this state and the country uh, to keep your organizations moving forward um, and, and meet the needs of the constituents who, who come to your parks? I, I know we're running out of time, and I'll be as quick as we can. Uh, Metro Parks here in Central Ohio, we've conserved 27,000, actually we're getting really close, 28,000 acres of land. When I say conserved it, it's going to be preserved from now until our great, 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 great grandkids are out there playing in these creeks. We've got the Big Darby Creek, which is a federal scenic river. Doesn't happen very often. Between efforts between Metro Parks, a couple other municipalities, as well as the Nature Conservancy, we've almost got this corridor protected. In our lifetimes, we might have that entire stretch protected from its headwaters up in Bell Fountain down to where it meets the Scioto River in uh, Pickaway County. Uh, conservation is in our blood. Uh, as long as I'm around, it, it, it is what pumps our heart to get it around there. And uh, I'm rambling now because I know I've got short time, so I'll turn it over to Mr. Longwind. <laughs> what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> the, you know, um, first, you know, we answered this question this morning, and, and I'll, I'll say this. First off, 
I, and, I, and I said this to Jeff earlier, I'm a, I'm a cheerleader for Central Ohio. I've grown up here all my life. I've never been more proud to be from this region than I am today. We, we are leading the country. We are, yeah, do we have things that we want to do and improve? And, and yeah, we're, we wouldn't be good at what we did if we didn't always want to be better. But the bottom line is, is we're one of, the, one of the leaders in terms of the region, in terms of the place to be, and, and definitely in the state and, and in this part of the country, and, and I'd say across the country, we're doing some great things. Uh, what we know about the workforce is we know that our, our new folks want activity, they want physical activity, they want it on their time, right? So how can we do that? We can give them trails, we can give them access to parks, those types of things, which is what we're doing. We're conserving land for the future, like Tim talked about. We're providing recreation access at our parks and our facilities, and we're building trails. Uh, and and the, one of the other things I would talk about from an innovative standpoint is we're looking for unique and innovative ways to do it. We want everybody in this room to be a part of it. We want, we want not just the government entities to be responsible for it, but we want the nonprofits alongside us helping us do it. We want the private partners, we want the corporate, you know, come write a check. Be a part of it. Be a part of putting these trails down on the ground and be a part of building these centers. That's how we're going to become even better and even stronger as a region, is getting everybody at the table and working together. So I, th I think from a, an innovation standpoint, that's, that's an, and I don't think people expect that. I think people think, oh, well, you know, the tax budget or, you know, we're going to have to cut things because of the reset. You know what? If we're doing our jobs, we're bringing other people to the table, and those things are sustainable long term. And that's, that's, I think that's going to be innovative. We're in such a day and age when uh, connectivity doesn't mean all of our trails are connected all around this central Ohio region, but that's probably the greatest collaboration between the two of you is how that trail system has flourished in the last little while here. Yeah, and there's a lot more to go, and it's not just us. It's, it's like I said before, it's, it's Morpsey bringing together, I, I, I have the honor to serve as the chair for the Central Ohio Greenways Board, and that uh, group is bringing together what I just talked about, the, the, the Madison, Madison County folks who are building trails and, and, and mowing them themselves with volunteers, the Dublin folks who are you know, up over our, uh, 100 miles of trails, Westville, Columbus, Metro Parks, all together in the same room with our advocates, our volunteers, private funders, our message people to get even more connections built. You know, Tim talked about we've done a great job of north-south connectors along our rivers because Number one, it was started as a way to conserve and protect our waterways, but also because it was access, it was easy, we could get to that land. Now we've got the hard job of going east and west and connecting the neighborhoods to those trails. We want to see people to be able to ride their bike to the trail or walk to the trail, not get in their car and drive to the trail. So we're going to need everybody to step up and help out with that. Because right now we can, I'm a frequent user of miles and miles of trails around here, uh, and I enjoy them as much as anyone, if not more. Uh, we can get north to south how far right now through metro parks and, and the collaboration? County to county, you can run from all the way from Delaware all the way down to Pickaway County. Yeah. And when the Allen Creek Trail is completed later this year, we just opened a section, we're getting ready to open the last section this year. When it's fully connected, it'll be connected to the Ohio Erie Trail, and the Ohio Erie Trail will eventually go from Cincinnati to Cleveland. That'll be when phenomenal. Tony says eventually, that's real, that's, unless somebody has some serious health issues, that's in our lifetimes. I mean, that's a real close completion date. Certainly a fun part of this is to uh, see what some of you folks are thinking out there. And we have some folks right now ready with some questions. Go ahead, sir. My name is Warren Fishman, and uh, I feel we can't have too many parks. Um, uh, and and uh, I, my park is Glacier Ridge, my home park. And, and that was a wonderful collaboration, by the way, between Dublin and the Metro Park System. And um, uh, I wonder, uh, and, and I watched that happen, and it was a thrill to see a Metro Park go up there. And I wonder how, are, are you still, are, are you, are you talking a lot about trails, but are, are, is the future still acquiring more land and building more parks and expanding the parks we have? That's the first part of my question. Second part is that uh, I've also participated in the wonderful climbing wall uh, down, uh, downtown, and, and the people northwest are jealous, and, and uh, uh, the, the population is going to grow dramatically because of the, of the uh, uh, Bridge Street Corridor plan in Dublin, and I wonder if you have any plans to put something like a climbing wall in some of our other parks. Um, uh, that's my question. Um, to talk about growth in metro parks, we have been on a growth, if you look at it for the 70 years, really an emerald necklace, and that's a coined term in our phrase, but we really have that outside ring done, or not done, but well under progress. 
Uh, as long as there's no landowners or people who can benefit out of this, a focus of ours over the next 70 years is how can we start doing that inside that outer belt? Are there brownfields? Are there underutilized warehouse complexes to really do another Scioto Audubon? And I, I look at Tony right now because it would be a joint project if we would do it with inside the city. And to really green up that central corridor. Uh, a real quick follow up on the glacier. Glacier uh, Ridge is a park under development. I probably hear once a month about they need a climbing wall out there. <laughs> well, we just partnered with Washington Township with one of their regional parks. I see some action happening in that northwest area of the city real soon. And the only thing I would add to Parkland, uh, yes. I mean, from a City of Columbus perspective, we have ordinances in place that any time a development project uh, comes to the table, a Parkland dedication is required. And we're always looking at Parkland dedication in order to meet park access needs. We have a plan that's available on our website, our master plan that was adopted in 2014, that addresses getting the park access to all of our mm -hmm. sections of our community. So we're, we definitely have plans to increase our Parkland access. and. Uh, try to find ways to, to continue to operate and maintain those that are sustainable as well. Sir? Hi, I'm Todd Kleismith. I'm with the Ohio History Connection. And uh, uh, just, just listening to you, I, I want to go from here, go home, change clothes, go for a hike. Go, it's been go, outstanding. go. Outstanding. Tom, it was um, my idea to get so. <laughs> Tony to get us a Coda bus through the city and get Tim to take <laughs> us to Sayada Audubon and have this whole meeting there. Hey. Guys, let's do it. Done. <laughs> um, well, I, I want to congratulate you. Thank your organizations. I live in Clintonville. We've got Brevoort Park on one uh, on one end of our street. We've got the Whetstone Park of Roses on the other, and the Olentangy Trail. Mm -hmm. And we just have this uh, abundance of options for recreation. I've got a six-year-old daughter. We just we just love it. So I can't say enough good things about that. We love our local parks, metro parks. And I wanted to mention the National Parks, uh, which has its centennial next year. And I'm wondering from your vantage points, if there's any spillover benefits to, uh, to us locally from the uh, centennial of the National Parks Service next year. Thanks. You know, I don't know about the direct impact, and Tim may, may know more than I, but I, I think any time we can share the value of parks, and that's what they'll do during that celebration, whether it's the 70th celebration of Metro Parks, our 100th that we did five years ago, or the, the celebration of National, any time we can bring to the forefront the importance of parks and recreation, it's, it's, a, it's a benefit. Because so many of us, we lose track of that. We don't realize the impact that it's had on our lives and how important that park is right up the street from your house and the, the options that you have for recreation and the lives that recreation and parks and, and, and conservation, that, what they've changed. So I think any time we have things like that, the celebration, those of you who probably don't know, July is actual National Recre Recreation and Parks Month. Uh, and and we, you know, we, we're telling the story all across the country about how valuable our parks are. Yeah, and really to look at the National Park Service in comparison to us sometimes is a challenge. Uh, you know, uh, I don't, here I again pontificating and I apologize, but you know, their, their dedication and funding to their parks right now is, is abysmal in my opinion. And it, I don't, you know, I don't want to benchmark us against them. I wish they would get back and start to benchmark themselves against some of our great park districts regionally, not just speaking Ohio either. But uh, I, I, I hope for a greater effort, and maybe it is a collaboration between their local areas. Sir. Uh, yes, my name is John McKnight. And uh, my, my brother Alan sends his regards. So, <laughs> he's on a um, sailboat on his way to Canada right now. Something like that, yeah. He's having a hard time adjusting to retirement. <laughs> um, so when I was a kid, I grew up in Clintonville, uh, right across the street from Brevoort Park. And they had a um, shelter house there with an employee that was on staff during the summer. Um, and that kind of allowed me to get engaged with the park. The, um, the employee that was there, you know, had activities planned, um, and you could, you know, check out a, you know, a kickball or football or a frisbee from the shelter house, and um, and that still exists in the larger parks, in Whetstone Park and some of the other larger parks. Uh, but over the years, due to budgeting and things like that, the I think a lot of the smaller parks have lost their their staff. Um, do you see that coming back, whether it be with paid staff or with volunteers? Um, the parks are wonderful with or without. Um, you know, the, the, the shelter house and the, the part-time staff employee, but, um, but I always really enjoyed that. So yeah, that's my question. Do you see that coming back? 
You know, uh, when, I joined the, when I joined the public side of the profession in 2000, I learned about playground programs, right? Where, where a lot of us have grown up, where, and Tim just talked to me about getting kicked out of that park from the play, that playground leader. Um, <laughs> the, uh, those, those are an incredible part of people's growing up and youth. And, and yeah, we do have some of that still going on. We have playground programs in, in almost all of our community centers throughout the city and, and, and a lot of our major parks. Uh, but what we're going to need to do to, to continue that level of engagement where we have it out at the smaller is count on partners. We can't just do it by ourselves. We can, but we can bring maybe a YMCA in, and they can run an activity there. Or we can bring the local uh, nonprofit group you know, or a church in to help lead an activity at a park. As long as, or met, okay, Tim will come and lead the activity <laughs> at that park. Somebody good will Tim's going to come. You know, we, but we've got, we've got tremendous spaces, so the opportunities are endless. We just need to figure out a way to do it a different way to make it sustainable. You know, that, that's the idea, is to figure out who, who can we get down there today to, to make that, and then share the story so people know that it's there. Thank you. Have you seen, Tim, that same ebb and flow where you need to work to get it back? It seems like you were talking about volunteers standing at the door. Yeah, absolutely, and I think, I think, and I was a kid of that playground. That wasn't a joke. I actually probably was asked to leave Brevoort Park a time or two. Um, Society has changed, and I think it is goes back to back when I was a kid. That's where we were sent to, and I was fortunate enough to work for Columbus as the playground program phased out. It wasn't because it wasn't a good idea; it was because we saw less and less people attend those programs, and that's when the summer camp programs became quite popular. Yeah. And both our organizations have an extensive summer camp program right now. Yeah. We have one more. Yes, hi, Andy Campbell. Thanks so much for being here, everybody. Uh, this might end up being a little bit of a commercial, but um, I was looking for something for my daughter and I to do this summer and just stumbled across the Cultural Arts Center and signed us both up for a ceramics class. Could you talk a little bit more about the offerings there? And I was just blown away by the talent and the opportunities uh, that are affordable you know, just down the street. So this is where you're, you're, you're getting the new guy, on the, putting the new guy on the spot, because uh, we have so many incredible programs. The first thing I'm going to tell you is either download the Columbus app, the City of Columbus app, or go to our, our website at columbus.gov, pull up the brochure, and there's a whole listing of cultural arts programs. That center is absolutely beautiful. If you have not been there, please, the, the, the folks from the History Connection probably could tell you the story better about the historical relevance of that building. The building itself is gorgeous. The exhibits are unbelievable. The local artists that we have on display, there's a collection there now. It's just, out, it's just outstanding, and, and you'll, you'll find yourself just lost. And then on top of all of that, you've got incredible programming. Uh, and, and I want to I want to mention the Cultural Arts Center has an incredible, you know, like you said, ceramics and art exploration, and there's there's workshops that go on all the time. But we have art programming in our centers all around the region. We have art programming at Whetstone. We have art programming at a number of our community centers. So not, you know, we hear a lot about the physical activity because it is one of the focuses, and 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 we need it. Uh, but the cultural arts opportunities in our programming is. They're, they're out there, and they're, they're, they're fantastic. And I know Metro Parks has some of those programs as well, so there's definitely some uh, great things to do for your family this summer, year-round. Tim has enough time to say, grab your park scope. Grab your park scope. <laughs> <laughs> grab, grab your park scope magazine, and all the programs are, are in there. Um, I want to tell you guys thank you because uh, you've shown us a lot about the history. You've told us how you've left a, a thumbprint on what has gone on uh, since you got here in your short time. Uh, and I really wanted to know how you're going to leave your mark moving forward in a lasting effect. And I don't know if we have time for that. We have, yeah, we have a quick second to uh, get a thought of you guys moving forward in 30 seconds or a minute. You know, I will consider myself a success at this job if... Uh, if we have a 100% voter turnout and 100% voter positive for the 2019 Metro Parks levy. There you go. <laughs> I saw your whole commission table clapping over there, Tim. Nice job. Nice job. You know, um, we, we have been doing incredible things, in, in, incredible uh, life-changing program and events going on in our department for years. So my job, if I do my job right, when I leave, those things will be sustainable. The, 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 that the folks in this room will know about what we're doing and will be engaged in helping us do it, and that will make us sustainable. So that 
the passion from the 325 plus employees and all the, the thousands of volunteers that have been a part of our organization, they can, they, can, they can just continue to build and continue to grow and continue to change people's lives because we've engaged, we've shared the story, and we've made it sustainable. Thank you both. Our presiding officer, Julie Keckstein, to close things out. Hope you enjoyed today's forum. Thanks a lot, guys. We encourage you. Yeah, thank you. And remember, you can view and share any of our forums, today's forum and any other ones, on CTV Columbus Television, WOSU and PBS affiliates statewide, the Ohio Channel, and anytime on our website via YouTube. Um, thank you so much to the Green Funds of the Columbus Foundation, Burgess and Naipel, our speakers. Let's all go to the park. Thank you. Thank you.